Yo, what's going on YouTube fam? I'm Sue, but feel free to call me Pat. And in just a few hours, Wuthering Waves will go live. A brand new gacha game that I'm super excited to try. Looking around the internet though, at all the content that's coming out for the game, I noticed there's a lot of day one tier lists and who to reroll for. And I've even seen, believe it or not, some spreadsheets with optimal DPS rotations for characters. Now I get it, right? It's a new game, super exciting, and the job of a content creator is to generate hype and inform their audience. That's all well and fine. But to me, I personally think that day one tier lists, who you should be re-rolling for in a gacha game, all of that stuff is irrelevant, which is what I want to talk about here in this uh, public service style announcement video. If you are stressing about which character you should take at the start of Wuthering Waves, please don't. Let me explain. I've been playing gacha games for about 10 years or so at this point. My very first one was Puzzle and Dragons. And in that game, you didn't get a guaranteed 5 star at the start. In fact, almost everything in the gacha game was just trash. If you didn't get a good start, it was advised that you reroll because, well, again, such a small pool of units was actually good in that game. Your only other option besides re-rolling was to pull out your wallet and actually fork over some money. In a post Hoyoverse slash Genshin Impact world though, that's not the case. There are so many more gacha games on the market right now and all of them are vying for your time and your money. As a result, games are just super generous and they make it as painless as possible to get into. Even the quote unquote worst five star can very easily clear almost every single piece of content in the game, right? If you have to focus on one specific style of character at the start, it's going to end up being the limited characters. In this case, it's going to be Xion and Yanlin. And the reason for that is because by design, these characters are most likely going to be stronger. They are not always available to be summoned, and they have to give you the impression that they are valuable and stronger than the characters that are in the standard pool. Because if they weren't, then you don't have any urgency to actually pull for the character. They want you to pull for the character, and if you don't get it, hopefully spend money. That is the business model, right? They bring out a character, you want it, you spend money to get it. If the character is not desirable or stronger than the stuff that's already in the pool, you're not going to spend on it. And over time, this is what we call power creep. New characters come out that are seen as more desirable or more powerful than the ones that the players of the game already have. That is kind of the main reason why I think day one tier lists are kind of irrelevant because most of the time, within six months to a year, the characters you're starting with, they don't really end up panning out super well. And this is especially true in gacha games for damage dealers. Those characters in particular almost never stand the test of time. If you are looking to pick up a character that is future proof in these type of games, I highly recommend that you pick up something like a tank, a support, a healer, something with an interesting niche, something that other characters don't do. I don't know too much yet about Wuthering Waves because I'm still new to this. I haven't even played the game. I wasn't in the betas, right? But from what I understand, Yin Lin is a sub DPS with an electro uh, niche, right? She is a lightning based character with some kind of niche. If that is the case, then she has more longevity, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she also in the future will not get power crap, right? Just think about any other gacha game that you've ever played, right? I played Genshin Impact for a little bit. Diluc was that guy at the start of the game. Diluc is basically not really worth talking about nowadays. Zila was the hotness at the start of Honkai Star Rail. You'd be hard pressed to find somebody except for the most dedicated investors of Zila playing over characters like Acheron or Jing Liu, right? There's just better characters now that are in the pool. Even the gacha game that I make content for, Epic 7, says was that guy at release. And his reign lasted probably like all of a week because people realized at the start that a couple of three stars just were way more impressive than he was. And that brings us to our next point that I want to talk about, which is to be highly inquisitive and not trust everything that you read or watch on the internet. And yes, I realize that that is ironic because here I am as a content creator on YouTube telling you to trust me, to not trust me. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? That's, it's a bit weird. Anyways, 
the thing I'm trying to convey to you is I've been gaming for a really long time at this point, right? Almost like 30 years or so. And I've played a lot of games, uh, both casually and competitively across a multitude of genres. And one thing just is always seemed to be a constant amongst those things. And that's that people tend to misevaluate things like really badly, especially at the start of a new game or a new format. Even the uh, top players, right? The best players or the most viewed content creators, the most popular content creators, they still make mistakes. As a small time content creator, I also still make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. So let me give you some examples across various different genres. I am a former competitive card game player. I love to play games like Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering pros are notoriously bad at evaluating certain cards. For example, Tarmogoyf here was considered, you know, kind of a fun build around, not really anything special. And then he just kind of became the face of competitive magic for like, what, half a decade? Moving on to fighting games, we have games like Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, where Albert Wesker was considered probably the best character in the game at the start. They referred to him as the man in the back, the best anchor in the entire game. Why would you not play him, right? And then about a month later, he just completely disappeared from the competitive landscape once people had more time with the game. And they realized, you know, Doctor Doom is a better character with higher synergy, and Virgil's just overall a better anchor. In the world of gacha games, I remember people saying in Honkai Star Rail that patch 1.5 was an easy skip, that Ho Ho wasn't really that great of a character. I don't remember anyone singing her praises anywhere near as much as more recent releases. And uh, again, when I played Genshin Impact, it was all Diluc all day, baby, on day one, but I don't really remember anyone talking about how great Bennett was going to actually end up being in those games. You see what I'm saying? People's first impressions are very rarely how it actually is. So don't put too much stock in, again, these day one tier lists, these reroll tier lists. And certainly don't put any stock into these uh, optimal DPS uh, spreadsheets that I'm seeing. Because even if you played in the beta, you don't know what endgame looks like. I don't believe you had access to it. And even if you did, you don't have enough playtime with the game to actually figure out what the best team compositions are, the best echo loadouts, things like that, right? So while I applaud the efforts of the theory crafters that are trying really hard to come up with these quote unquote optimal uh, rotations, optimal compositions, right? It's simply just too early and you just don't know what the landscape of endgame looks like. And honestly, you may never get to use those optimal rotations. If this game has a difficult end game, which is what people wanted out of Genshin, a lot of that stuff just might not be practical, right? And even if it was practical, that goes back to the fact that that was the beta. It's not the same as live. So damage numbers might be different. Frame data. Look, at the end of the day, I personally play games for fun. And I think that that is what you should do as well. I think you're more likely to stick with a game long term if you're enjoying it right from the get go. Don't worry about what character is strong at the start. Don't worry about rerolling to get the optimal start. Just pick a character with your five star selector that you think looks cool and you think will get you a lot of fun and a lot of mileage out of the game. You don't need an optimal start. That is the whole point I'm trying to convey to you in this video. Have fun on your first day from the very first minute. Don't spend hours trying to get a specific character or get a specific optimal start. I think that's gonna kill any fun or excitement that you could have had with this game. You wanna be playing this right away along with everyone else in the community, all your friends. You don't wanna miss out on that day one hype because I find that day one for a gotcha game is usually the most exciting time to get into said game. Long story short, I'm taking John Shin because I like cute girls that are, you know, martial artists. That's what I'm taking. I don't know what you're going to take, but you can let me know down in the comments below. I don't know how much content I will do for Wuthering Waves, but I can guarantee you that I will at least do a day one impressions video. And if I really enjoy it, you can expect character impressions as well as the top tier guides that you've come to expect from me here on this channel. So 
get subscribed if you want to stay up to date. And if you want to see me play the game live when it comes out later on tonight, you can check me out on Twitch over at twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. Or you can just watch it here on this YouTube channel under the lives tab. Enjoy your very first day with Wuthering Waves. Hopefully this video has been some help to you. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.